Today, September 25th, 2018, this edition of Roland Martin Unfiltered, Bill Cosby is in a jail as we speak, sentenced today to three to ten years in prison. We will talk with Vincent Thompson of WURD Radio in Philadelphia, who was in the courtroom when the judge rendered that particular verdict. He'll give us all the details about what took place, but also... Uh, he was there covering all of the victim statements uh, after the trial. We'll also talk with comedian Joe Torrey, of course, who attended this trial uh, on behalf of Bill Cosby, was with him, shared his thoughts on today's verdict. Also, defense attorney out of Dallas, Yodit Tuelde, uh, she also uh, shares her thoughts in terms of this case and also talks about Bill Cosby and Brett Kavanaugh, how those two a two-star contrast in terms of what we're looking at right now. We'll also uh, break down the PR strategy of the Cosby campaign. Many people said uh, it was a constant blunder. Uh, we're also here at the Spirit of Democracy Awards. Uh, we'll be chatting with, uh, about, with Melanie Campbell, of course, about the impact of voting all across this country less than 50 days the midterm elections. Folks, it is a packed show. It's time to bring in the funk on Roland Martin Unfiltered. Let's go.
a stunning day in Pennsylvania courtroom. We're just outside of Philadelphia. Bill Cosby, the iconic comedian and actor, uh, a, a, a groundbreaker in Hollywood, sent to prison. It was shortly before 2 p.m. when the judge handed down his sentence, three to ten years in prison for Bill Cosby, uh, who earlier this year was convicted of sexual assault stemming from an incident with Andrea Constant uh, in 2004. Many folks did not believe we would actually see the image of Bill Cosby being laid out of a courtroom in handcuffs to an awaiting car. The judge did not an opportunity for him to remain uh, free pending appeals. And so as we speak, Bill Cosby is in a jail there in Pennsylvania. He'll be going to the newest state prison there in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, serving at least three years as a result of this sentence. He will be eligible for parole in three years, but again, the sentence is for three to ten years. Uh, earlier uh, today, the judge ruled that uh, called Bill Cosby a violent sexual predator. And that's what he'll be known as. And so, of course, uh, that was a, an analysis done by the court after he was convicted, uh, where yesterday testimony took place where he was called that, saying they were not they were not sure that Bill Cosby would not do again what he has been convicted of. It has been a long time for a number of those women who have accused Bill Cosby of sexual assault. Uh, the number is uh, in excess of 50, yet he was convicted for what took place with Andrea Constant, a former basketball coach with the Temple University basketball team. Of course, the university, Bill Cosby, used to sit on the board of trustees, was a huge supporter of as well. Outside of the courtroom, uh, his uh, publicist uh, read a statement from Camille Cosby blasting the judge, blasting the decision, also calling it uh, blatant racism and sexism. Uh, later in the show, we'll talk with Vincent Thompson of WURD Radio in Philadelphia, a uh, black-owned radio station there who was in the courtroom. He's been covering this trial uh, from the beginning. So we hear from him. Uh, all kind of folks have been reacting on social media to the news of Bill Cosby uh, being, again, sent to prison. You still have reaction. The television Critics Association earlier before the sentence even came down uh, pulled their Lifetime Achievement Award for Bill Cosby, one of many honors that have been taken away from him as a result of him going on trial, being convicted, and now being sentenced. As a part of his sentencing, Bill Cosby is going to have to, for the rest of his life, also do constant counseling as a result and will be designated a sexual offender even if he is released from prison. One of the folks uh, who was with Bill Cosby during this trial, the second trial, remember the first one ended in a mistrial, is comedian Joe Torrey. Uh, he attended several days of this particular trial with Bill Cosby earlier today. I caught up with Joe Torrey uh, to listen to what he had to say. We'll talk to him in just a moment. We also chatted with Yodi Tuelde, a, a defense attorney out of Dallas, who gave her analysis on this as well. You've often seen her uh, on this show. Uh, she's been cover She's been following this as well. And in our conversation, she broke down various missteps, but also the fact that she is not shocked at all that Bill Cosby is sitting in prison. This is my conversation with attorney Yodi Tuelde. All right, so Yudit, uh, just your initial thoughts on, again, Bill Cosby. Three to ten years, must serve at least three years in prison uh, before he's eligible for parole, and the judge remanding him immediately and being let out in handcuffs. Not surprised. Um, I think the team, obviously, they were asking for home uh, house arrest. Not going to happen. The fact that he had five accusers testify in the guilt innocence portion, um, Andrea the Constance, uh, personal statement that was read, her testimony, prior uh, bad acts witnesses that, that testified yesterday, all of that, considering the, the SVP uh, finding that he was a sexually violent predator, all of that played a factor in the judge saying, you know what, you're going you're gonna to do the, the minimum, the three years to 10. Now, remember, the prosecutors were asking for, what, five to 10? So he went below what the prosecutors were asking for. House arrest would have been idiotic. Um, you have someone who's just been labeled a, a, a sex offender who's going to have to now register for that for a lifetime, who's going to have to continuously get counseling for a lifetime. And so, and mind you, the judge wouldn't be able to factor this in, but Cosby said nothing. 
when he had the opportunity to. He didn't necessarily have to say that he was guilty, of course, or apologize, because, of course, that would have implications on their appeal. But he could have at least asked for leniency, some mercy, but he said nothing. So the judge can't consider something that no one says. So all he had at that point was what the state was providing, and that was testimony after testimony of survivors, accusers, of the like. So not surprised that he's got to do prison time. As a lawyer, as a defense attorney, when you look at uh, the, the multiple defense teams he had, the multiple lawyers he had, when you look at the comments the publicist made after the previous mistrial, when you look at the other comments, and then, of course, uh, as, they, as they were heading to being sentenced, uh, Camille Cosby, very much attacking this judge, saying she hired a former prosecutor to investigate this judge in his past. I mean, I know judges are not supposed to take those things into account, uh, but that but that is a lot uh, yeah, it's, it's, happening, it's, you know, when you would normally, naturally you would say, mm, you might want to temper that down. Your thoughts about all of that as well, uh, leading up to the second trial and then, of course, the sentencing. Well, ever since Cosby has even been charged with this crime, uh, he's had the same PR agent who I think has been making uh, failure after failure after failure in the public eye. Because if it's all about optics, um, you want to keep your, your mouth closed. You just don't know who's listening, not just the judge, but a potential jury pool, right? And they want to appeal as well. So there's going to have to be a court that's going to be looking at that appeal. And they're also listening to what you're saying. So what you say does have an effect, even if it's not coming out of Cosby's mouth. Camille Cosby, I'm not sure what her motivation is, um, considering the fact that a jury found her husband guilty on three felonies, um, the judge was going to render the the punishment. I don't know if this is just more about optics. She just wants to let people know that this was maybe an unfair trial so that she could somehow save a shred of dignity with, when it comes to her husband's legacy that's essentially been flushed down the toilet since this has begun. So I don't know what her motivations are. I just don't think that it's helpful in any way. Um, and. I guess we'll see in the next coming, you know, weeks when the appeal comes down and, and you know, what that's about. But she didn't even come to court. I don't know what that says. That well, could be very... Well, we got to remember, she she did not come to most of the trial. Uh, I think they came... Well, you would think she would come on the last day, though, Roland. I mean, he's being... He's going to be sentenced today. And, and, and I, you would have thought that she would have And clearly, up. I, I don't know of anybody who actually thought that he was... who He wouldn't get jail time. I mean, I, I mean, by, at the end of the day, uh, you could look at Again, all things that happened leading up to this, look at even yesterday and know uh, no, that, that, he, that he was going to get jail time. Um, yeah. when, when, you, when, you, when you look at this, look at this in terms of this society we're in, I, I had a tweet earlier uh, that Vanity Fair set out where they had this one writer who said that uh, Bill Cosby going to prison is, uh, is somewhat, not, it's, it's, it's somewhat, um, good, if you will, to take away the bitterness of Donald Trump. And I responded by saying, how does Bill Cosby going to prison somehow alleviate the bitterness of Donald Trump being the White House, considering Donald Trump bragged about grabbing women uh, by their vagina? Uh, as a guy and he's the president. He's a, and he's the president of the he's United the States. Right. You know, the Supreme Court nominee who has been uh, allegations of sexual harassment, sexual assault as well, who's about yeah. to have a lifetime appointment as well. And I said, yeah. I just don't understand how Bill Cosby going to prison somehow goes, ooh, I feel better. Your thoughts on that? So I got a lot of heat, and I'm still getting heat uh, on Twitter right now for something that I said on CNN earlier. And I made the comparison between Kavanaugh's accusers and what's been alleged you know, against him and what's been happening with Bill Cosby. And I think people are not really understanding or choose to just fail to understand what I'm trying to say. In terms of Kavanaugh, People are already, and I'm talking about Republicans on TV and the media, there are people on Twitter who support this man without ever have, hearing just even a word coming out of Dr. Ford or the other accuser's mouth. That, to me, signals something because the reaction when it comes to Cosby's accusers, do you remember that, that, that magazine that had all of his accusers on the, on the cover? Right. People were in support, as they should be, right, in support of hearing these women and their truth. That was supported. When it comes to Kavanaugh, though, there isn't a real opportunity for these women to, to tell their story and actually try and persuade, even though that's not their job, to persuade the Senate Republicans, for example, this Thursday of what they're trying to say when they, their minds are already made up. Mm -hmm. They've already said out the gate, 
I'll listen to her, but, but, but if I had a juror tell me that they've already made up their mind with regards to the guilt of my client, that juror would be X'd out automatically. If I had a juror who was already picked, say a potential juror who was already picked, and they, you know, made it known that they had already made up their minds before listening to all the evidence, I would ask for a mistrial. That's not okay. Now, I understand that there's a distinguishment between a, a court of law and right. a hearing. Got it. But if we're really trying to get to the truth of these accusations for a man who's trying to get the seat to the highest court in the land, if we're trying to get to the bottom of the truth, then why are you not calling potential witnesses, compelling right. their testimony? Why are you not making him submit to a polygraph test? Because one of the accusers actually did, and it came back mm -hmm. to, to, to show that she was being truthful. So it's, it's how they're brushing her accusations and allegations under the rug for Kavanaugh. But when it comes to Bill Cosby, it's, it's an applause. It's, 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 it's hypocritical. Last on question. So many levels. Last question. Were you shocked that we, that we even saw what happened today? That when these allegations first came out, when Hannibal yeah. Burris, uh, of course, uh, his, his, his comedic routine went viral. Then, of course, this thing, then all of a sudden he gets, he gets, uh, go through this whole deal. All these women come out and then he gets charged on the last day before the statute of limitations uh, ran out. Were you shocked to see Bill Cosby let off in handcuffs? On one end, I was because this is Bill Cosby. This is America's dad. This is someone I've watched growing up, wanted to be a part of the family. Um, so seeing him in this position was shocking. On the other hand, I wasn't shocked because you have this man who has been revered in our community, who's been someone who's been um, a father figure to all of us, um, someone who's been an example for us in the black community and, and to be taken down the way he has been. And, and rightfully so. Not surprised, especially in the media. Um, I, I would say in the media, it's been more than what I've seen with other offenders who don't look like us. Plain and simple. I mean, Brock Turner, do I, I need to mention him? Um, who of course, he's the, guilty. He, he's the former Stanford diver uh, who, uh, again, Three months. Uh, raped a woman and as she was lying on, on the side of a road. And the Found judge, guilty. And the judge yeah. said, don't want his life ruined. This is how we categorize white young offenders. It's like, oh, it was just boyish behavior. Oh, they have so much life to live. We can't ruin their future. Now, we're talking about an 81-year-old black man, but still, nonetheless, a black man. And I've been in the criminal justice system for about mm -hmm. a decade now, and I've seen the stark differences. So on one hand, I was shocked. On the other hand, I wasn't. All right. Ready to well day. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Roland. All right, folks, uh, about right now, Bill Cosby is actually moving, being moved to a state correctional facility. Uh, this is the actual booking photo uh, that was a shot of Bill Cosby uh, when uh, he was first transferred to the jail. As I said, he was led out of the courtroom in handcuffs, uh, taken out uh, in a vehicle, uh, went to a uh, waiting facility, and then the booking photo was taken. Uh, he, of course, uh, in the courtroom, uh, handed authorities uh, his watch, his wallet. Uh, he came out with his uh, with his cane in handcuffs. Uh, in this, this photo, you see him. Uh, also, he took his tie off. Uh, you see him in his suspenders and his shirt as well. That's how he was actually led out of the courtroom. Uh, many of folks, of course, uh, shocked uh, to actually uh, see uh, this uh, day come. One of them is comedian Joe Torrey. Uh, he is someone, of course, uh, who was uh, uh, with Bill Cosby in this particular uh, uh, case, uh, was there by his side uh, a number of days uh, during this retrial. I caught up with him earlier today where he shared his thoughts again on seeing uh, the comedic icon Bill Cosby being sent to prison. All right, Joe, first off, uh, you obviously... Um when Bill Cosby was on trial before he was convicted, uh, attended uh, several of the days, spoke out uh, you know, on his behalf, walking with him. Just just your reaction to uh, not, him now being sentenced, having to serve at least three years in state prison before he's even eligible for parole. Uh, well, well, I mean, well, first of all, I mean, you know, uh, you know, I, I, my thing is for everybody at this point to to try to, you know, reach some type of point of healing, you know what I'm saying, to a point where, you know, they're relieved and it seems like even in his mind and even um, in some of the accusers' minds that, okay, they have reached some point of healing. So, you know, uh, kudos to everybody that, that thinks that, you know, that they have reached a higher point of understanding. Um, and, you know, 
And in my day, you know, and age, I'm like, wow, I mean, you got to be, you know, really on your toes for, you know, what happened 37 years ago, 40 or 57 years ago. In this day and age, people can kind of see, you know, that they can get justice. Um, on my behalf, on his, from his thinking, I was just there for, uh, you know, for her case. And that case, what they say, you know, some still false evidence and stuff was still, you know, that was implicated with presented in, in that manner. And you mean the Andre, Andrea Constant? Yeah, you're right. Got this is that's the only one I'm I'm I I witnessed. That's the only evidence I saw. That's the only couple of, you know trials that I've been to. So I can only speak on that right. one. Um, is it is it just, is it difficult? To, you know, to first of all, the judge today uh, right. um, agreed with the assessment that he is a violent sexual predator, and to think that somebody who was called America's dad, somebody who was one of the most beloved figures, every Q rating, whatever, ranked top top three uh, at 81 years old uh, will now be known as that. Uh, obviously a groundbreaking actor, groundbreaking comedian. Uh, well, I mean, you know, you, people put titles on there. You know, I mean, you didn't really hear, hear that just mouth. You hear it, you know, if, you, if people say stuff over and over and over again and try to make, um, like you said, the world's, you know, greatest dad seem like he was some predator or some killer, like he was, you know, uh, you know, Jack the Ripper or something like that. Uh, and make it seem like he was, I was there. So, you know, I, I saw how they can, you know, make words or make the sentencing seem like he was this mask, you know, killer, murderer, rapist, you know, stalking women. And it wasn't anything like that. So in, in order to, you know, in this day of the way the media has to do, to keep you clicking and liking, I mean, they use those words, um, but that's not who he is uh, as a person. And that's not, not what I've seen. And that's not to me what he's shown the world as far as him being a philanthropist and giving back. So I, I on the speak of that, I mean, I have to say you know, on his side, I got I to gotta hold up the cape up for all the good that he's done. And what was it? Is it hard for you to, with, with all you just said, the things that he's done for HBCUs, the things that he has done for the arts, being again a groundbreaking a person in Hollywood, uh, to see this legendary comedian led away in handcuffs um, to prison, knowing full well uh, that he will spend at least the next three years there before he's even eligible for parole? I mean, you know, that side is, you know, is uneasy for some. Um, but to also see and know his spirit and hear his, you know, his uh, publicism speak about where he is because he, you know, they say he didn't show any remorse because if you're not guilty, why should you show any remorse? If you feel you've been set up, then how can you, you know, accept healing for that? Um, but I mean, that's the same thing in this day and age. You gotta, you gotta go to, you know, you got a, a president's in office that's been accused of things worse than that. You got a, a judge, a Supreme Court judge that's about to be put in office that still have accusers coming out. And, you know, they're not even, in, and they, you know, their accusations were way worse than they said Bill Cosby did. And, uh, you know, so I'm, I'm like, if that's going to happen, and, and if this is the path for justice to be seen, then make it be seen for everybody of all color and everybody that's been accused of something that has high power that could have taken advantage of that. And if that's the light that we see in this age, then, you know, I'm all for that. Because, you know, it's a lot of stuff that's been done in the dark that people need to be held accountable for. Like and I don't think that you can... You, you can't put, you know, uh, one of our greatest African-American men on, on trial like that without putting a lot of other people that are very suspect and guilty as well. Last question for you. You obviously uh, were there, walked in the court with him, stood by his side. Uh, any, uh, would you also uh, plan to uh, visit him um, while he uh, is in prison? I mean, yeah, if I get the opportunity. I mean, I was asked to come, you know, to, you know, to come see and see for myself to see the truth. And, and that's what I did. Um, if I was asked to, you know, to be at the Michael Jackson trial, I would have been there. If I could ask, if I could have been at the OJ trial, I would have been there. Um, if I could have asked to see anything in that, I would see that. But I've also went to see, you know, a couple of people in jail. I went to see Mike Tyson when he was in jail. Um, you know, a couple of other people I don't want to throw out. But I mean, if I get the opportunity to, to go, maybe because it's still, it's a learning situation. And it's also what the Bible said. Have you come to me at my lowest point? Have you come to, you know, to offer healing to me wherever I've been? And, you know, that's who I am. I'm about positivity and healing and growth for everybody. So if that's the light that we see today, then, you know, then that's what's been done. All right, Joe Torrey, I appreciate it, man. Thank you so very much. Hey, man, appreciate you. Take it easy. All right, folks, let's chat with Crystal High, CEO of Influence, uh, a uh, arts and media company uh, focused on social influence and public policy and all that good stuff. Lana Walls, a uh, longtime PR practitioner. Glad to have both of you here. First off, um, 
he was convicted in April. Um, charges first came back in full force in 2014. Uh, but we're b- both of you still shocked to see Bill Cosby, 81 years old, uh, America's dad in handcuffs. So, so when you put this in context of this Me Too moment, I think the verdict itself is not shocking, but the broader cultural phenomenon, thinking about growing up watching the Cosby show and how, you know, you're inside kind of America's living room, right? And so this was such an integral part of, I know how I uh, came to be, and it was like, oh, the Cosby show, this is going to be our And also, on, so that today was, was a debut of A Different World, um, but 27, yeah. whatever, some odd years ago as well. Yeah, so I mean, it's like... Culturally, it, it, it's shocking for that personal impact, but because of this moment um, and, and just the volume of outcry, not only in the Me Too movement generally, but specifically against Cosby, you know, as you mentioned, 50 plus um, complaints coming forward of this repeated uh, alleged right sexual conduct and misconduct. And so I, I think that um, it isn't totally shocking in that regard. The sentence it is what's shocking, right? So three to 10 years at 81 years old, you're effectively saying this is a life sentence. Um, I, I don't necessarily foresee that Cosby's going to be able to live out that time because he's not going to club fed. This is state prison that he's going to be in for the next mm-hmm. three to 10 years. So that's a lot to take in. Lon, when you, again, when you think about about um, how so many people read his books, watched his comedy, watched television shows, uh, his show saved NBC, the network. Uh, when you think about all of that, you think about uh, the millions given to HBCUs, what he has done for black artists. I mean, we can go down the line. Right. Um, I, I still think for a lot of people, uh, it is stunning and shocking. Uh, the, the just the, not the fall from grace, but just literally all of that. Where every year, when the studies were done, who were the most revered figures in America? He was in the top three. Right. Well, he, it, it's sad, but it's uh, it's not as much shocking because you look at the number of folks, the number of complaints, and the fact that we talk about PR strategy to go on the attack like he did. I mean, I think they've kind of re- reinvigorated. The whole Me Too, Me Too movement. It was a Me Too movement before it really got hot because of the fact that he attacked a lot of folks. And when and the numbers started to increase, you know, that's a problem. And then all of a sudden you're starting to think, well, this is America's dad, but was America dad? Is there something underneath that we've missed all this time? You know, And that's, that's a problem. I think that's a problem that created for him. For but also the fact that this sentence comes down today, and here we are uh, two days away, 48 hours away from Brett Kavanaugh testifying on Capitol Hill somebody appointed to a name to the Supreme Court, and this guy could very well be one of nine Supreme Court justices. Uh, You have a person sitting in the Oval Office who bragged about sexually harassing, assaulting women. He's a president of the United States. In fact, there was a Vanity Fair writer, as I I said to you deep, uh, who tweeted something along the lines of, well, you know, the Cosby uh, sentence uh, eases the bitterness of a Trump in the White House. And I'm going... How in the hell does that happen, that you somehow think that? I mean, so it's, so you juxtapose a Kavanaugh and a Trump with Bill Cosby. Cosby's going to prison. One of these guys, Kavanaugh, will likely on Saturday be put on the Supreme Court. So I think on one hand, to your point, this really underscores what is just – traditional and historic inequity in this country, right? Not saying that uh, sexual assault or any of that conduct is any less heinous, right, in any of these cases, but the reality is you have a black man being held to a different standard than even the President of the United States. We did a story yesterday of a white man in Alaska who strangled a woman, sexually assaulted her, and got probation. Right, right. Right, you've got a two-track. You really have a dual, dual society, and it always has been. We have to realize that, but the fact it is, you know, it's still, it doesn't make it any better, no right. matter who does it. That's the problem. You know, we have to really kind of address that within our own communities as well. Uh, it was, of course, uh, a, a wild scene outside of the courtroom, in the courtroom today. Uh, Vincent Thompson of WURD Radio, of course, black-owned radio there in Philadelphia. Vincent has been covering this trial for a significant period of time. He was actually in the courtroom today. Uh, Vincent, welcome to Roller Mart Unfiltered. Thank you, Roland. Good to be on the show. Uh, first and foremost, uh, describe for us the scene moments before, first of all, before the sentencing, um, when the judge came out and said he agreed with the assessment and called Bill Cosby a violent sexual predator. Well, here's what happened. The, before Bill Cosby was sentenced, a couple of months ago, 
there was an assessment done by a group called the Pennsylvania Sexual Assessment Board that can recommend whether someone's a sexually violent predator or not. They look at transcripts. They look at testimony to come up with their decision. They also offered Mr. Cosby the opportunity to be interviewed. He refer, he preferred not to be interviewed by that uh, assessment board. They issued their assessment, and then it's up to the judge to decide whether the assessment is the right thing or the wrong thing. He decided it was, and what it really means is that Mr. Cosby is under strict orders for reporting. So if he does get out within three years, because a three- to ten-year sentence, as the judge indicated, he has to stay at least three years in the state prison. After the third year, he's eligible for parole. So if he would meet parole and would get out, then he would have certain things he'd have to do, all similar to Megan's law, where he'd have to report uh, where he's living. He would have to uh, – the thing I think that's most shocking for Mr. Cosby, and he even um, kind of looked puzzled in the courtroom, was when they said, they will list his name, address, and the crime on a website for sexual victim, you know, for sexual assault victims that he would be public. So you would know where his address is. You would know what he was convicted of. So I think that's the one thing that shocked a lot of people. And then when the sentencing came down, the sentencing law in Pennsylvania for what Mr. Cosby was convicted of is 22 to 36 months. So the fact that he got three years is right within – the guidelines. Now, remember, the district attorney was asking for five to ten years, so he wanted him. He wanted him to serve five years minimum before he could have parole. The judge decided to do three. So, Vincent, uh, Vincent, the judge said, the judge said, "quote It is time for justice in a court of law. The day has come. The time has come." Uh, that's what he said right before uh, he sentenced Bill Cosby. Uh, I have read some reports that Bill Cosby had his head down the entire time. Uh, so can you describe for us what you saw, uh, what was Bill Cosby's reaction as the judge read that sentence? Well, he was uh, looking straight ahead. It was difficult to really see what his reaction was because there's 100 people in the courtroom, and he was at the very front, and Mr. Cosby's back was toward us, and there were also people sitting in front of most of the media. So it was difficult to see what his position was. But I can tell you, after the verdict was read, he was quiet. He looked at his attorneys. And I think the thing that shocked him most is that he was going to be taken away in handcuffs. I don't know if he was prepared to be taken away moments later in handcuffs to a county prison. And that's where he's at right now. He's in the Montgomery County Correctional Facility. And then he'll be transferred to a state jail. Vincent, at what point did the judge clear the courtroom um when uh so were you in the courtroom when uh the bailiffs or the officers came over to bill cosby or did that take place after the courtroom was cleared the sheriffs came toward bill cosby but then they cleared the courtroom and then it was after everybody had left the courtroom where you see the video of bill cosby being walked out with the handcuffs on the front of his hand he was not handcuffed to the back he was handcuffed to the front and then let out. But I can tell you right now, he is currently in the Montgomery County Correctional Facility, which is a state facility. He'll probably stay here a few days before he's transferred to what's called uh, SCI Phoenix, which is the state prison here in southeastern Pennsylvania. And then they will assess him to determine what state prison he will actually end up in. There's no guarantee he's going to end up at Montgomery County Prison. He could end up at a prison anywhere in the state. Um, the New York Post uh, has this story. Bill Cosby laughs before going into custody. They claim uh, that he was seen cracking jokes with his team uh, in the Montgomery County Court as uh, the sheriff's officers swooped in. Did you see anything like that? I saw Mr. Cosby um, talking to Andrew Wyatt and others and laughing at some of the things, but I don't think it was Bill Cosby laughing at the sentence. You know, sometimes... Sometimes the tears of a clown, right? You just laugh because you got to keep from crying. That's really what I think it was, but I don't think Cosby was laughing at the sentence. What I saw is a man who was really surprised that he was going to be taken away in handcuffs that day. I mean, think about it. Right now, Bill Cosby is sitting in a jail cell in suburban Philadelphia, probably in, you know, probably in, in self-containment thinking, how the heck did I end up here after the last four or five months when I was in house arrest at my home? And that's what his attorneys were asking for. They were asking for him to stay out while he appealed his sentence, and the judge said, no, this is not a sentence that allows you to stay at home. 
we're sending you directly to a state facility. Um, there were a lot of people who were very shocked at how aggressive uh, Camille Cosby has been in attacking the judge and criticizing the judge, hiring a former prosecutor to, quote, investigate the judge. Uh, and, and I talked to many other lawyers who said, look, you know, when you're facing a retrial, the last thing you do is attack the judge. Well, after that, retri- after that verdict, the retrial, that's exactly what Andrew Wyatt and others did when they read a statement from Camille Cosby afterwards. Uh, and over the last two weeks leading up to this sentencing, the same thing has happened. Were court observers surprised at how aggressive uh, Camille Cosby and the Bill Cosby team was, knowing full well that the, the decision to sentence him was in the hands of this judge? I think they were. A lot of the courtroom observers I know that deal with Montgomery County Court, and for people that don't know, Montgomery County is maybe about 30 miles outside of Philadelphia. They were very surprised with that aggressive stance by Camille Cosby. But I think this is the thing that really amazes me. At today's sentencing, Camille Cosby was not here. And there is a section of the court where Bill Cosby could have his friends and his family. There were only four people in that section, two longtime friends, Andrew Wyatt, his spokesman, and Ebony Benson, his spokesperson. So, you know, here's a man who for years was everything. People wanted to be near him. People wanted to touch him. But at a time when he really needed support, no one was there for him. Vincent, uh, just a couple more questions for you. Uh, First off, um, you mentioned Camille Cosby not being there. Um, uh, She didn't attend most of that second trial, correct? She didn't attend most of it, but we did see her. At certain times, like we saw her at the end of the second trial when they were uh, imposing sentence, you know what I mean? When they were saying he was guilty, but we did see her, but I hadn't seen her for the two days of the sentencing that just happened yesterday and today, which I was pretty surprised about personally. Uh, Last, last question. Um, WURD, of course, there in Philadelphia, Uh, Bill Cosby, beloved figure in the city of Philadelphia, always represented Philadelphia always represented yep. Temple University, uh, just like here in Washington, D.C., when you think about, uh, of course, his relationship when it comes to Ben's Chili Bowl, all of that. Um, what do you think um, his legacy now will be, will be uh, when it comes to how African Americans will view him? Uh, because, I'm, because there are a lot of black folks uh, who are still upset with Bill Cosby's comments uh, about black folks, uh, about uh, their values, about how they should behave, uh, about black folks protesting when they said oh, Pookie would get shot uh, by the police uh, and being chased out. So you, st- you still have these very hardcore feelings. What have you been hearing from WURD listeners in Philadelphia about how they still feel today about Bill Cosby? Well, I think it's going to be the same way, Roland, as it's been since the beginning of the trial. If you're a Bill Cosby supporter and you think he was a man wrong, you're going to continue to think he's a man wrong until the end of time. But if you were somebody who's like, Bill Cosby did this to women, uh, sexually assaulted them, people have to remember, a, a lot of the, about a third of the 50 women are African-American women. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he, he didn't have a specific type of, of person. You know, he black, white, it didn't really matter. They're going to think, you know, he deserved what he got. And to a lot of people, you know, Bill Cosby had over 12 attorneys representing him in the two retrials, in the sentencing. He's probably going to have different attorneys uh, representing him when it comes to the appeal process that's going to take months and years. And he had them spent well over a million dollars. As you know, Pookie and Ray Ray don't have that kind of money. To, to fight for an appeal. So I think when people argue, well, he didn't have effective counsel or he didn't have the best that money can buy, because he had the best that money can buy. If anybody could have had the legal team to have gotten him out of jail, it was Bill Cosby. Vincent Thompson, WURD Radio. I certainly appreciate it. Thanks a lot. You're welcome, Roland. Thanks for having me on. I talked about uh, catching up with the folks and getting their reaction. We did so here in Washington, D.C., uh, chatting with uh, going on the street to see what folks had to say uh, about this Bill Cosby verdict. Uh, and so uh, we're going to play some of that for you right now. I think it's unfair. He's 81 years old and going blind or is blind. 
they could have kept him on house arrest, like he'd been on for the past six months, uh, and still satisfy whatever they call justice. The justice ain't nothing but just us. Bill Cosby case remind me of R Red Fox, uh, uh, Sammy Davis Jr. When our black stars reach a certain pinnacle, and they stomp each other any kind of way, they find some way to put them down. I felt or sensed they're going to give him 10. They call this as being nice three to ten. He ain't gonna make parole in three. He ain't gonna make don't last three years. The man is 81 years old and he's blind. Come on, y'all. God, have some mercy. You know what I mean? This man needs mercy. All the things he's done positive and plus, sure he made a mistake. Sure he got accused of all that. But he's 81 years old. We got to respect our elders. And we don't take elders and throw them away. And that's what they're doing to Bill Carpet. They throwing him away. And the reason why I'm, I'm neutral about it is one, I never met Mr. Cosby myself personally, so I am I can't judge him. But also on the other hand, it still sticks in my mind why did they wait so long? You know, it's like someone attacking me when, when I was younger and then 80 years, 60, 70 years later, I understand that they said that it was because of fear or whatever, but then even when the fear factor left. I don't understand why it took so long. Uh, I think it's unfair. Uh, I think he's being singled out as a celebrity and as an African-American celebrity, whereas we have other people who are like literally in politics, politicians. Uh, same thing, but it just seems to be passed over. So I, I really believe that he's being singled out, and I really think that it's unfair. I believe that. I don't care who you are. If you committed that type of crime and you're convicted of it by a jury of your peers, then you have to do your time. I don't care who he is or who he was. Like, if he did something to victimize or, yeah, victimize women in general, like, you're going to have to pay for it. As far as the label is concerned, I don't know if sometimes that's a way of some people just adding this extra stamp of him like being a demon, demonizing his name. I'm not sure. Um, I don't see him like trying to roll up on a whole bunch of different women right now being the age that he is. But um, unfortunately in our society as a black man, you have so many standards held. You have high standards that you have and it's part of the the nature of the beast, unfortunately. And when they get you, they get you. All right, folks, those are the folks we caught up with outside of Ben's Chili Bowl here in D.C. Again, uh, Bill Cosby, uh, his uh, image used to be on the side of that building for decades. Uh, he often talked about them uh, in his uh, stand-up routine, very close to the owners of Ben's Chili Bowl. Uh, and they caught a lot of flack uh, for not taking down that mural that was on the side of the building yet when they had, of course, uh, their, 60th, their anniversary. Uh, their 60th, I believe, uh, they then commissioned a new one and put other different figures, and Bill Cosby was not on that particular mural. So many different uh, honors he has lost as a result of first the accusations, then being convicted, and now, of course, uh, him uh, heading to prison. As I mentioned, Tele Television Critics Association, uh, they, uh, re they re uh, renounced their award, Lifetime Achievement Award given to him, uh, but also, the Hollywood Walk of Fame has made clear uh, his star will not be removed. They have never removed the star of anybody uh, who has gotten one, no matter what has happened to them later on. So I want to go back to uh, Crystal High and Lon Walls and talk about that. because. So, see, so here's – I get folks uh, being a part of this news cycle. Um, and I understand people responding. But whether you whether you disagree or agree with him being convicted or going to prison, you can't erase. I mean, you, you can't act as if um, Bill Cosby w is not an iconic figure in the history of television, in the history of Hollywood. 
So, you know, we tend not to deal really well with nuance, right? And like, we like to look at people from this specific, let me put you in a box view. If you are not Mr. Jello Pudding Cosby Man, then you can't possibly be any other thing, right? So I think this is one of those lessons, right? One of those moments where people have to step back and say, yes, he has been accused and convicted of some tragic things, right? But at the same time, he has done tremendous good in the community as well. Like if you go back, I think, the number of people he has sent to college, the amount of contributions he's made to HBCUs. You made a point earlier about how people looked at his books as leadership, right? And we talked about this cultural moment about growing up with the Cosby Show and what that meant uh, culturally for so many people. That doesn't go away, but this is one of those times where we have to be able to separate the man a as the person and the man from what he's done in a professional and a philanthropic context. I mean, I mean look, Lon, Phil Spector sitting in prison right now um, for, for killing a woman. That doesn't negate that Phil Spector is considered one of the top radio, uh, record producers in music history and being a genius when it comes to music. It doesn't. Right. Well, but the thing is here is that, first of all, we go back to the PR. You have to embrace the fact he was America's dad. And sometimes our dads and grandfathers have issues. Now, we negated and we neglected that. And his legal team, his PR team, decided they're going to be aggressive. You're going to try to compare him to Emmett Till. Let's give me a break. So I think they really made a mistake in trying not to embrace his dad image. And, and for that, dads are sick. How many cases are we talking about? How many folks have come forward? At some point in time, you decide, let's look at this as a sickness. And you look at the case, you say, this guy is sick. What he's doing is sick. So let's go the approach of he's a sick man. Let's deal with that, as opposed to trying to fight each and every person who comes forward. That's well, a in fact, well, today, uh, when Andrew Wyatt came out, out of the courtroom, he was reading a statement. I wasn't sure if that was because uh, Ebony, who was one of the other publicists, was reading the Camille Cosby statement. Uh, and I, so I'm not sure if he was also reading another part of it, but at one point he was reading and he and he and he invoked racism and sexism, uh, Bill Cosby uh, being targeted. Yeah, it, that that's that may be true. It doesn't make what he did correct. And again, I say that this is a sick man. I mean, when it gets down to it, he's a sick man. We should have dealt with it that way. But, but here's the deal: as, as somebody who's done PR for a number of years. Would you have even been that aggressive coming out, knowing full well you're also trying to file an appeal? Exactly. That's, that's, that's a mistake. When you have a potential jury pool out there, you don't want to be aggressive because, you fact, you don't know who you're going to affect. Well, first of all, he's already been convicted. Yeah, so, right. but, but So the appeal is really a, uh, would be dealing with the judges, but you're right. still operating in the court of public opinion. Exactly. Court, court of public opinion, exactly. And I think at some point in time you've got to pull back and say, okay, enough of this. This is not working for us. We need to retrench and figure out some, a better way to do this because, in fact, this man's image is going to go up in flames no matter what he's done, what's happened. I mean, at the end of the day, like you said, what is his legacy going to be? Can, can, so, so I remember when uh, the Smithsonian Museum of African American History, when it opened, um, there were a lot of people who said that they needed to put something in there uh, with regards to his misdeeds. And, uh, and they did. And that was very controversial. Mm -hmm. A lot of people felt that they shouldn't have. Others said they should have. Uh, to um, Vincent Thompson's point, uh, a third of the women who who's accused him, they're African American. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is not uh, an issue of a black man being accused by white women. There are some of women also, uh, so also black. Um, so I'm very curious to, 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 to hear from both of you. Again, how do we then have a discussion about a Bill Cosby and his place in history? And when you think back to, I mean, I'll give you a perfect example, uh, uh, the black stuntman. The reality is when you were in Hollywood and you were black and they needed a stunt person, they went and got somebody white and they put shoe polish on their face. It was Bill Cosby who said, no, you are going to get me a black stunt person. And when the documentary, when the documentary came out about the history of the black stunt men and stunt women, they removed Bill Cosby from the documentary, mm -hmm. even though he was the reason right. for their organization right. even being founded because of the position that he took. When I think about uh, Melvin Van Peebles, the mere, uh, uh, sweet, uh, sweet uh, back badass movie. That movie, Bill Cosby, was one of the one of the funders. And so, how do we have a discussion about all of that that Bill Cosby has done, and still have a discussion about him being convicted of sexual assault? 
Well, so I think on one hand, it goes back to this notion of nuance, right? And like being able to step back and have more complete and complex um, conversations about the various facets and, and factors that make up a person. It's hard to do that in a social media context when you're limited to a few, you know, Twitter characters or like you have a short amount of uh, content you can okay, put on Facebook. Okay, how about this here? So how about this here? So let's let's imagine. Oh, how about this one here? So let's imagine um, there's a discussion in L.A., in L.A.C.P., any place, and we're talking about images, mm -hmm. and we're talking about the importance of Im images and what they mean. For all of these years, we've always talked about what the Cosby Show meant right. to black folks, to have that image of a lawyer and a doctor and being pre presented to black America. Mm -hmm. um, so I would think that if that discussion is still being held, folks are going to be very leery about even bringing up the Cosby Show out of fear of ticking somebody else. See, that's the problem. We don't need to be afraid. I mean, we need to accept. We need to embrace what he's done positively. I mean, to step back and all of a sudden he's kicked off of everything, I think that's a little bit of an overreaction. I think basically he's done a lot of good things. Let's take that into consideration. It's like we, we judge any other person, our dad. He's got good stuff. He's got bad stuff. We need to kind of grow up and realize we've got to deal with the bad as well as the good. That's, 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 maybe that might be sort of a naive approach, but that's what we need to do. We can't erase this guy from what he's done. That's impossible. I think the other angle that would be interesting is to see how you separate conversation around what has historically um, been Bill Cosby's legacy right. and then making sure he doesn't continue to profit financially on a going forward basis, right? Because a lot of times when you think about, you know, we're going to revoke this award, we're going to revoke, revoke your syndication, we're going to, you know, take away all of the things that you supposedly stood for, right? That has a direct bearing on his financial well-being. Well, but not just him. Not just I him. I mean, the brother, the, the brother Jeffrey Holder. Yeah. Right. I, exactly. I mean, he, uh, I yeah. think like, uh, he, uh, he said one of the reasons he took that job mm -hmm. at Trader Joe's was because the residuals, the residuals from the Cosby up. Show they greatly up. decreased, dried up, mm -hmm. because when the show was pulled from yeah. a bunch of different networks, including black networks. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. yeah, no, I mean, it, it goes back again. I'm going to keep coming to complexity and nuance, right. and we can't try and approach issues like this in a social media-only framework where we're just going to get, here are my 140, 280 right. characters of pure outrage and emotion. If you're really trying to be honest about the role he's played in black culture and American culture, you have to step back and, and talk broadly about and, and last point, we also have to confront the reality and challenge men and women on the reality that Bill Cosby has been convicted because sexual right. harassment, sexual assault right. uh, is real. Uh, like I said, a third of these women were, at, were, uh, were black, so it's not as if uh, folks can say, well, no, no, that, that, you know, that simply yeah. wasn't the case. Right. Uh, we have to still deal with the issue of sex and power and money, mm -hmm. even when it involves a Bill Cosby, and have those real discussions and then not just say, well, there are double standards and, well, uh, that this happened to white folks, but Bill Cosby's gone to jail, but Bill O'Reilly is still out. Roger L., of course, was never prosecuted. Uh, Trump and Kavanaugh, Harvey Weinstein, on and on and on, still dealing with that that impacts black women as well. Exactly. Absolutely. No, I mean, you, you couldn't be uh, more right about that right. analysis. And I think when we talk about these things in totality, we have a tendency to want to cancel people when we're upset with their conduct. And that, in some ways, right, it'll prove your point. But if you're ultimately trying to get to a point of progress, you can't necessarily cancel everybody. Like, we all wanted to cancel Kanye when he was talking out the mouth about, you know, slavery being a choice. And if I got <laughs> and if I got a and, and, and I'm not buying his stuff, you know, so it's like right. th those are right. decisions, but there are still conversations right. that can be had about right. impact and cultural relevance over time. And so similar, I think, in, in the Cosby situation, we don't have to continue to patronize anything of his, right. but right. you can have that broader conversation. you got to respect what he's done. And, and I never that. remind people that Mike Tyson went to jail for rape, mm -hmm. got out. People watched him in The Hangover and other movies and then went to see his – uh, one man play that was also on HBO, and people st and people still revere right. Mike Tyson, who went to prison right. for a rape. Here buying R. Kelly records, yeah, right, right. But there's sometimes you gotta right. have. I mean, I just you have to have like, contrition. You have to have contrition. E even though R. Kelly was was not convicted, he was not. Right. Okay, but you still have the massive allegations against him. But again, shows you. The, again, the types of discussions that are being had. Right. Uh, Crystal Long, we certainly appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Appreciate again, uh, we chatted with some other folks uh, on the streets here in D.C. Uh, about the Bill Cosby sentencing. Uh, here's more of what they had to say. Yeah, 
with the Bill Cosby situation today, I think it's crazy that the government allowing women to come back 30, 40 years later, when 30, 40 years earlier, when these guys became celebrities, these women chased them. I mean, women chase money. That's all, y'all gotta look at it. I don't think he raped none of these women or none of that. And how, and how could you prove something after 30, 20, 50 years later? Yeah, this is Charlie speaking. Thank you. It's, uh, it's time it was overdue. Um, he deserves the sentence that he has been given. Um, I think with the last trial and he got off, I um, think that he thought he was never going to get prison for it, but any assault um, on women, it does not matter how long ago it has been in the past, it's a it's a valid, valid argument to bring against someone, and uh, I'm happy for the, the verdict. Bill Cosby being sentenced to jail today is kind of a shocker, and I feel like even if he was, like, I feel like it's such a sensitive topic that they shouldn't have announced it but now that it's out there my reaction like I feel weird about it and I mean it's it's no other feeling to, to but to feel weird when somebody you admire you know is going through something this dark and and it's no explanation so right now I'm, I'm just kind of I, I feel for him, but I'm also like outraged that this is happening and, and it's no explanation. So I'm just kind of like hoping for the best right now. This is madness. I know he hurt a lot of women. I know what he did was wrong. Um, and he's paying for it. Um, however, I would like also for uh, um, Weinstein and all the other ones that, uh, that, that were um, also um, um, accused of doing um, of, of sexual bad things to women, she also should go to jail as well. So everyone from the game, from Kevin Spacey's on down, should be going right along with Bill Cosby. So Bill should be the only one, he should be the start. And if he's not the, if he's the start, and the rest of them not, then you'll see me back again, protesting again. All right, folks, uh, again, uh, the, Bill Cosby, uh, as we speak, is sitting in a Pennsylvania jail uh, being prepared to go to a Pennsylvania state prison. He'll be there for the next three years before he's eligible for parole. And so we certainly will have more on this on tomorrow's show. We are here at uh, the Hamilton in Washington, D.C., where National Coalition of Black Citizens Participation will be having their 21st annual Spirit of Democracy Awards uh, tonight. Uh, that's why we're here on location. We're joined by Felicia Davis with Black Women's Roundtable in Atlanta and, of course, Melanie Campbell, a leader of the Black Women's Roundtable and the National Coalition of Black Civic Participation. How y'all doing? doing? Wonderful. Uh, so but first, before we talk about voting, before we talk about, uh, again, tonight's awards, I do have to get both of you. Uh, just uh, your thoughts on what took place today in Pennsylvania, uh, seeing Bill Cosby being let out in handcuffs. Well, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tragedy, I think. You know, his, his legacy is what it is, and, and it's definitely, it will change. His legacy will uh, not fully for his one who once he's gone, but it, it's a tragedy at 80 plus years old. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you have to pay the price for things that you've done. Uh, um, and for, and as a black woman who's uh, had um, who's been impacted by uh, I'm a Me Too survivor, and understand that um, if you don't have anybody to share that story with, or, or feel that anybody's gonna believe you. Um, uh, I was blessed to be able to have a, a, someone who could help me through navigate my first job out of college. I was um, uh, sexually, uh, um, what's the word, uh, harassed sexually harassed by a high up in the company that I worked for at that time, my first job out of college. And uh, this guy would, uh, every time he'd bring, you know, he wasn't my direct book supervisor, he was above everybody. He was the regional director. And he would um, have me come into the office and, you know, you're doing a great job. And I was in corporate America at the time. And then, you know, it was uh, always a joke with a punchline that was always sexual uh, in context. And then one day, and I, I, I lived in Atlanta at the time, and I would catch a, I would catch a bus. That's what I tell young people. Don't tell me. I, I took a bus, a train, and a bus to get to work. My first job out of college, across town. And one day I worked late, and that particular boss Say I give you a ride home, and I was stuck, and my bus was—I had missed my bus, and he took me to the train station, 
and made this sexual comment, and when he got finished, he, his, his hand ended up on my vagina. Straight up, no chaser. I'm 21 years old, mm -hmm. right? Who do I go to? Fortunately, I had someone who could help me navigate that. Mm -hmm. One day I saw him walk out that door, but not everybody has that opportunity. Right. So as a person who lived through that, and I've not publicly shared this story, so, but you know, but it's been on my heart, it was all that's been going on with the Kavanaugh hearings, you know, and, and, and all of that now, and all of the things that are going on with him, and, and then even the Bill Cosby story, I, I, I can say you have to pay the price, but also there has to be fair just system as mm -hmm. well, you know. So, so for me, it's been a long time coming. Um, when it first started out, I've gone through kind of a millennial education. So I have a daughter who's just about 30. She was like, right away, he did it, and he needs to be found guilty, and those days are over. And I was like, oh, but it's Bill Cosby. What were those women doing? He was a married man, blah, 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 blah. So it's taken me personally an art to get to the point where, wait a minute, that was absolutely outrageous. He, he was a predator, and yes, we have to punish predators. Now, I had to learn to set aside the legacy and the way in which I think of Bill Cosby and his wife, because I'm like, we yeah, old school yeah. black women. So old school black women couldn't Speak find for yourself themselves. On the old school part. Couldn't find themselves. Damn you know, well, you old school black. Don't even try to act like. Let me I'm, try to act like you I'm new somewhere. school. Black. You ain't no, new I'm school no black. School. You old school. school black. Don't even front. I'm 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 yeah, seasoned. Okay, right. I'm seasoned. Yeah, okay. I'm seasoned. So I, I'll be speaking for Please myself. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So so, but from the old school, some things we couldn't find ourselves in particular situations. Mm -hmm. It might be more Hollywood situations. So I had to get out of that judgment. Now, fast forward. So I, I've got myself to be okay with punishment. I think crime and punishment should meet itself. I don't think we should waste a dime incarcerating him. But if that's what the, if that's what the punishment is, fine. But since we learned that it can take 30 years for that kind of justice, mm -hmm. I think that says something about how we go about investigating any accusation. Because right now, it's interesting. Any uh, that was, accusation. That's what your deed said. She said that, you know, you have these people who are saying, oh, what a, Brett Kavanaugh, look, that's, that's 30, 40, 50 years ago. Yeah, but you never some, of, some of the allegations of Bill Cosby were back from the mid-60s. Right, right. right. So, right. And, and, then, and there were people who were saying, okay, believe her. Right. Which happened in, uh, again, yeah. mid-60s. But, but, but then when it comes to Kavanaugh saying, oh, no, 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 no. It, yeah. Don't don't believe was, him. Right. He was yeah. a kid. Uh, or he was a kid. And we prosecute seventeen year olds as grown right. men. Right. So it's interesting how yeah. we want to look at it. And again, I, I tweeted this story. There was a doctor in Houston, um, and uh, uh, this guy uh, he he was convicted of raping a woman who was high, who was drugged, mm -hmm. uh, who was and and he had, he had put her under. Mm. No jail time. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the white guy yesterday in Alaska again strangled a woman, sexually assaulted her. Probation. Uh, the mm -hmm. former Stanford swimmer mm -hmm. rapes a woman. Mm -hmm. The judge gives him what three months, saying, "Well, I don't want to ruin uh, his yeah. life." Right. Uh, there was a judge in, I believe it was in um, Minnesota or Wyoming, one of those states, where a guy raped a child, and the judge did not give him a sentence. And you're going, "Wait a minute, hold up. How, how, does, this, can how does this work?" Right. We, there is something about black fatherhood related to Bill Cosby. So we cannot have the conversation without thinking Dr. Huxtable and what has been done to that image as well. And that's something that I think those of us in the black community have to make sure that we take the conversation all the way through the arc to say that that image for black America is still valid and we still respect and appreciate that time and what it's okay. done for us at the same time that we say that this man is a predator. And that's, but that there should be equality in America, I think that's the song we've been singing a long time. Yeah, and the We're bias in, in, the, in the sentencing, the bi there's still racial bias in sentencing even. And it was you bring up those points. And so, um, so for sure. someone who's 80 plus years old, you know, there's no statute, there should not be a statute of, li statute of limitations mm -hmm. when it comes to justice, right? Um, and so I, what I think about, you know, I think about, you know, even in college, right? You know, just, just knowing, you know, I don't know if sister doesn't have a story 
of yeah. some sort. Maybe more, some may be more egregious than others. You know, had a had had a good friend in college, date raped. You know, going through and then you know and then she felt like I was date raped, so it's my fault. So therefore, I'm not gonna. Mm -hmm. it, it you has know, always press charges been or, or, or go to the women. law for so so it's it's a tough tough thing. Yeah. So let's talk about um, the uh, Spirit Democracy Awards. First of all, who are you honoring? Uh, we are honoring awesome folks. Uh, uh, we are honoring Stephanie and Quentin James. Uh, we're honoring Apollo. Uh, Stephanie Quentin James, yes. founder of Collective Pack. The Collective uh, they Pack. They played a huge role in the election strategy. cycle the last couple of years. Right. Uh, we are honoring um, Apollos Baker, who is a labor leader with AFGE, who's our board member of the year. Um, we're honoring Linda Spragans Dunn, who uh, uh, who runs Odyssey Media, who empowers black women and, and, and helps sponsor entrepreneurship. Uh, we're honoring George Gresham, who leads at SEIU 1199, so who works, works on workers' rights and social justice. We're honoring Tony Lewis, Jr., who's a local uh, activist and leader here in Washington, D.C., who has a powerful story, who focuses on uh, helping those who are returning home from prison, whose father has a life sentence in prison, and he, he dedicated his life to really fighting for justice and, and, and community uh, empowerment. Um, I'm missing someone. I just um, because I'm going not in order. Um, uh, Howie Hodges, uh, who uh, is, uh, uh, works in technology and communications and has been a, a strong um, 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 community activist, even from the corporate America standpoint. And so all of these folks, and I hope I haven't missed anyone because I'm lo not looking at the list, um, are doing uh, paying it forward, if you will. And so this this event is always about being able to, uh, as you well know, because you've hosted us before, uh, you know, we're going to be having conversations with our honorees. Yeah, um, we changed the format a few years ago, and so we get the opportunity, and thank you, Praise Lord, the Lord. for um, uh, being able to interview <laughs> and, and learn some things about not just, you know, w how they got here, but share some, some wisdom and ideas. And in a presidential election, as we are, surely we'll also be talking about this election, what that means, you know, how we build black political power in this country, economic power in this country, and so, uh, so we're really excited. Uh, and thank you for being here uh, with us. Please, to that point, uh, I mean, we are, I mean, obviously, we're about 40-some-odd days away, 41 or 40, uh, for the midterm elections. Uh, we have uh, registration deadlines that are coming up very soon. Yes. Uh, I think in Florida is October 9th, and so uh, we're not far at all. Same thing uh, in Texas mm -hmm. and many of the other states as well. And uh, it's, it's very interesting to see the level of engagement uh, of folks. Um, because and I and I've seen it across the country, I think folks are going to be very surprised by what happens in November with turnout because and and not just Andrew Gillum in Florida, not just Stacey Abrams in uh, mm -hmm. in Georgia and uh, Ben Jealous in Maryland, yeah. but I, I think after 2016, after so many people who said, "Oh, Hillary, she's the same as Donald Trump," and then now people go, "Okay, what the hell happened?" I think people are now seeing also in uh, the impact of what happens when you don't vote and you sit out an election. Absolutely. Uh, I think people are aware. The one thing about the black voter, they're really smart. So they have been asking the question of both parties, what have you done for me lately? They're looking at numbers and they're wanting their vote to mean something. And they are focusing back at the local level. So it's not even just governor. But people are looking, wait a minute, who's my mayor, who's my sheriff? Who's my DA? And they're my learning DA. about how do we impact our life yep. right here at home. So I think that kind of grassroots energy is really a, a big change for us because we usually focus top of the ticket. So now it's bottom up for real, and I think that's going to be powerful in terms of base building over the long run. And in, in, in a nonpartisan frame, we've been out here way too many years. Right. And a lot of new strategies moving in some different ways really undermined our infrastructure. So we've been in a rebuilding mode right. the last two, three, four years. But we're getting ready to bring it in this year, and we're set up for the next two. So instead of just looking at right now, yes, we're going to have some sort of a wave. 
but we know that we're putting the infrastructure in on the mm -hmm. ground mm -hmm. so that we get a mm -hmm. comprehensive change with an agenda. Right. So some of us have been talking the Southern strategy and the black agenda for a long time. Mm -hmm. There, um, uh, Bill, labor, everyone, we've been saying, what about black infrastructure and rebuilding our communities? So we're on an economic empowerment message that's going to bring us around. I'm seeing sick. Melanie, your final comment. Uh, well, f first of all, thank you again. And the other thing is, we, if folks want to get involved, we have our Unity 18 Black uh, Voting and Political Power Campaign. And if they could just go to unity18.org, there's all kind of information. Today is National Voter Registration Day. I think you already talked about mm -hmm. that. People can get information. They can register online. They can volunteer for our campaign. They can find out how to get involved in other organizations' campaigns. They can also just have information there to find out you, how you can register voters, how you can turn out voters, how you can, it can individually do uh, – uh, um, to, to uh, help make sure that we build this and black political power, uh, unity, ca uh, unity campaign dot org. Yeah. Thank you, unity, unity campaign, unity dot, campaign dot, dot, org. dot org, and hashtag power the sister vote. Okay, all right then. Well, I certainly appreciate it. Thank you so very much, uh, folks. I want to thank all of you for watching as well. Uh, do me a favor if you've got actually a reaction uh, to uh, the Bill Cosby scene. This is what I want you to do. I want you to go to Twitter, upload that uh, video using the hashtag Roland Martin Unfiltered, and we're going to share some of those uh, videos on tomorrow's show don't forget you can also support this show uh this, this, this look freedom ain't free uh and this ain't free i keep yeah. using the point we got to fund our freedom so yeah. please go to rollermartinunfiltered.com to join our uh bring the funk fan club uh to help make us make this possible uh and so uh you can also see uh the restream of this show uh, at 10 p.m at 2 a.m 6 a.m and 10 a.m as well of course you can also watch it on vod on facebook youtube and periscope and, of course, you can also download the audio and video podcast from Google Play Store plus iTunes. For everybody here uh, at the Spirit of Democracy Awards, the 21st Annual Spirit of Democracy Awards, uh, I'm Roland Martin. And the uh, discussions we'll be having later, we'll be shooting those and sharing those with you as well. So I got to go. I shall see you guys tomorrow. Holla!